Hey, Tabitha, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and I'm going to show you how your Ray-Ban 5121 is going to look like with transition gray lenses in there. I'm going to cut these right before I go on vacation. Don't worry, I can make you and the wife happy, so everyone's a winner. Let me pull this down so we can see what we're doing, that way you can watch everything. This is your Ray-Ban 5121, color 2000, size 50. Take it out of the original packaging. Take it out of your Italian leather Wayfarer case. You got Wayfarer embossed on there. Pull the frame out, and of course your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth that is on the inside. I'm going to put that back inside the case. And this is how Ray-Ban sends me the frame with all the original packaging. And if they think it's a good idea to put a plastic sleeve on there so your frame does not scratch during shipping, well, I'm going to put a second one on the other side so we'll have twice the protection. How's that sound? How's that look? All right, well, let me take everything off so I can go ahead and get started. Take all that off of there. And this is your classic original Wayfarer look with the, the demo lenses. I'm going to remove those. These are the ones that say Ray-Ban on there, so I'm going to actually save these for you, put them in the bag, so you will be receiving everything that Ray-Ban sends to me. So I'm going to put your Wayfarer frame into my Italian Santanelli, the LE1000 patternless edger. Now the stylus is going to pop up and trace the shape of the left lens first, and then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the right. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy the frame and you get free clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses which is what you chose and then you pay the upgrade to have the transition photochromic gray lenses installed. So I'm going to pull up the shape of the frame and if this were prescription I would put in your pupillary distance but I am you, this is not prescription, so I'm going to have it match the frames PD. Just some shop talk. This is a polycarbonate lens that I'm going to cut on the soft cycle. And this is being cut for a plastic frame. And I know in advance that this bevel is deeper, so I'm going to take it down just a little bit so it pops in and out a little bit quicker. So, these are your lenses. I'm going to take them out of the protective sleeves that they come in. Set that down. Now... These are the blocks that I'm going to need to, to stick onto the lens. That's what's going to hold it in place in the lathe while it's cutting. So believe it or not, 3M, the same people who make post-it notes, make these double-sided stickers. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick that on there and pull the tape away to make that side sticky. And I'm going to stick that down onto the middle of your lens. I'm going to do the same thing now for the other lens. Pull that away and then stick that onto your lens. I'm going to take this lens and put it into the Chuck, or as I like to say, the Charles, because I don't know it well enough to call it Chuck. But the calipers are going to come down and trace the, the back surface, the back side of the lens first, which is the concave side closest to your eyelashes. And then it's going to move over and trace the front surface, which is the convex surface. That will be the end of your vocabulary lesson today. So the actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left. There's that lighter color wheel that's like a heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away your polycarbonate material until it's the final shape and this wheel in the center with that channel that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I will have to close the door due to the sound but I just want you to see as your photochromic transitional gray lenses touches down on the cutting wheel. Okay. So your lenses are polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. Your lenses are virtually unbreakable. They are bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. So you will have permanent sunscreen for your eyes now. Unlike the lotion and the creams that you have to constantly reapply, you will never have to do anything ever again to these lenses. They're also aspheric, meaning it has a flatter curvature. It doesn't give you that ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance that you see out of cheap lenses. Of course, these are the thinner, lighter weight. I can't say it enough. Unbreakable, bulletproof up to 22 caliber, and both UVA and B protection. Because down in Pflugerville, Texas, you get your own personal sun that's going to follow you around and shine on you all day. So Tabitha, 
You actually told me you were getting these for your husband, Alex. Aren't you just a sweet, loving, caring, cherishing, wonderful, wonderful wife who I spoke with last night at 11 o'clock p.m. here on the East Coast, 10 p.m. your time, and you told me right off the bat, quit acting professional. Of course, she'd already been dipping into the, the Red's Apple Ale, your loving wife, Alex, of course, she gets even more loving after she has a few beers in her, but hey, she bought you these as a gift, so you know how sweet she is. Alex, you don't need, to, need me to tell you how wonderful Tabitha is. It was just fun talking to y'all on the phone last night. Now you see me at my day job. Of course, 11 o'clock tonight, I'll be emailing you again this video once it's finished upload to YouTube. So you can see everything being made. So this water cycle, I should have pointed out before that polycarbonate cuts dry. This is the only time during the cutting cycle that the water kicks in. It's just washing away any optical debris, optical sawdust, if you will. And it keeps the dust down. So in just a moment when this stops, which is now, I'll take it out and we'll see if it fits. But first thing I gotta do when I take it out of the Chuck, excuse me, the Charles, the Charlie, I gotta take it out of the Charlie and dry it off. And you still have some rough edges here that are left over from the cutting process. So I wanna use my hand stone, which is completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running. And my finger gets warm due to the friction. But it's that friction that allows me to put on what's known as the safety bevel. It's that white powdery substance you see me scraping off the edge of your lenses. And actually I do this so much that I've worn a V-shaped bevel into my thumbnail. I'm doing this so much. And then once I get it all scraped off of your lens and onto the counter, I carefully and collect it onto the counter and then I wipe it on the floor. And this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like this. So if you want to make a mess like me, kids, you got to stay in school. So let's see if your lenses fit. I'm gonna tuck them in at the outside corner. And this is a good way if you ever wanna change your lenses out. Um, you tuck them in at the outside. I uh, have the frame pointed upright. Um, to take them out, you actually push them downward. But you're always, I tell people, you just gotta thumb your nose at the idea. It's always with the thumb, it's always at the nose. So, I have the frame pointed upright. I'm actually working on the side closest to me. I'm not trying to reach across the frame by working on it. I turn it closest to me. I tuck it in at the outside corner, and then using my thumbs, I press down, and it snaps right into the frame. Now, to take them out, since you have multiple lenses, I turn the frame downward where the temples are pointing straight up in the air. I'm right-handed, so I grab the frame with my left hand, and I place my thumb at the nose. It's always with the thumb. It's always in the nose to push down. But I put my other thumb on top, and actually, I've got my knuckles grabbing this side of the frame with my thumb there. I use it to pinch down and hold, but you can pull back on the frame. You're not going to hurt this frame. It's incredibly durable, and you're not going to hurt your unbreakable lenses. So put your thumb on top of your other thumb and just push it downwards. Out it comes. You always push down with your thumbs. And again, to put them in, I turn the frame upright. I'm working on the side closest to me. I tuck it in at the outside corner, and using my thumbs at the nose, I press down, and it snaps in perfectly. So let's go ahead and start cutting your left lens. I'm going to flip that over to the left and hit start and just like before except this time the calipers are going to trace the left side of your frame onto the lens to make sure it's large enough to cut out as always starting with the concave the rear surface the back surface first which is closest to your eyelashes and then it's going to move over and trace the convex side of the lens which sits away from the face all the while knowing measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly where to place the bevel so it stays inside the bevel of the frame and as soon as this begins cutting, I'm going to continue to work on your right lens. So your left lens is cutting. I'm going to go ahead and take the block off of the right lens. Pull the little suction off. The, I am going to dry your lens off and hold it up to the light to make sure there are no blemishes. And we are good to go. 
so as I told you last night I'm gonna take my first day off of the year on Memorial Day I've worked seven days a week for the first six months of the year that was my New Year's resolution was to work every day my wife was okay with it now six months later she says uh-uh I gotta take some time off to see her normally I work about 15 or 16 hours a day Monday through Friday and then I cut back to 12 hours a day on the weekends getting everything shipped I do take my wife out to dinner on Saturday and Sunday night that's the only time I've seen her so we're gonna go and drive on the Blue Ridge Parkway on the Appalachia part of the of the mountains in North Carolina of course the small called the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and the Appalachians in North Carolina and Virginia There's a little town up there called Fancy Gap. I think it's at mile marker 202 on the Blue Ridge Parkway. My wife loves it up there. It's always 10 to 15 degrees cooler than it is here. Always a light breeze blowing. Of course, if you notice, your lens is completely flat around the edges, just like a nickel. It would stand up on the counter now if I took it out and tried to rest it up on the counter. And as you can see, there is water running in the background, but the polycarbonate is cutting dry. The water's there only because the water runs all the time, but it's there to collect the dust. And just like you saw before, in just a moment, these two water jets will kick in and start cleaning away any optical debris off of the lens. Right on command. So, since you've seen these videos, I am going to use my GoPro camera. Let me make sure it's not wet and dry everything off. I'm going to put it onto the dashboard of my wife's BMW convertible and we're going to drive around on the parkway and all through the nice quiet routes quiet routes through the woods you know just like the mountains you have there and mountains and forests that you have in Pflugerville Texas Pflugerville is that how you pronounce it I gotta learn how to say it right so So I'm going to take this out of the Charlie, dry it off. I'm not calling it Chuck. Again, real quick to the handstone for the safety bevel. Real quick, I'm going to use my thumbnail to scrape away that schwarf. And you know it's coming. Wipe it onto the floor. Hey, the clown has to have fun while he's at work. You know, the clown gets to laugh every once in a while. So, in order to insert your left lens, I have the, left, the empty left side closest to me. I have the frame turned upright and I tuck the lens in at the outside corner then using my thumbs I press down at the nose it snaps in perfectly I'm going to take this block off and of course I want to make sure the frame is in perfect shape before I mail it I always like to point out I'm going to just do a quick inspection on the lens here I always like to point out that 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them so, but I am going to make sure the frame is in standard alignment. Perfect. I'm going to make sure the frame is in standard alignment before I ship it to you, meaning it's in a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I'm just going to make sure that it's level. Now, if these are looser, if these fit great, you don't have to worry about it, but if they're too loose or too tight or one side is higher than the other, you may be part of the 80% majority who have one ear that's higher than the other. I'm part of that 80%. Four out of five people do, but when I put my finger down and press down my glasses wobble they sit level on me they just don't sit level on the table so I press down on yours yours is in standard alignment I flip it over I press down there is no wobble there I make sure that each temple overlaps perfectly and that there's the same amount of tension on each hinge these are the triple barrel hinges you have seen this is an incredibly sturdy frame this thing is going to last you for 20 years this is the Blues Brothers. This is the standard. This is what Ray-Ban goes by. This is the Wayfarer. I'm wearing the new Wayfarer. That is the difference. This one, the original has a little bit more tilt. If I demonstrate on mine, where this comes in closer to the cheek than mine, mine's a little bit smaller and fits in a little bit closer. And that is the difference between the two. I'm just going to set that down when I put mine back on. Now I want to darken your lenses so you'll see what they look like with the photochromic lenses dark. They are virtually clear now. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of UV light in my little transitions box. As you will see, all transition lenses 
take about 30 to 45 seconds for them to darken. It takes a little bit slower when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now this is important, Alex, remember, all transition lenses will get dark on day one as you're about to see. They're gonna to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is when you're in inside of a traditional car, your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your upholstery doesn't rot and your dashboard does not crack from sitting in the sun all day long. That's why your transition lenses won't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. They also don't darken once it gets into the mid-90s to 100. I remind everyone that you're miserable at 100 degrees. They're miserable at 100 degrees. They will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 100 degrees outside. So again, this is what they look like with the first time the lenses have been activated. Don't panic. They're going to continue to darken until they get as dark as sunglasses over the next few weeks. So if anyone has any questions, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Alex and Tabitha, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut the photochromic lenses for your Ray-Ban 5121 frames. And everyone else out there got the chance to see, you know it. That's right. That's how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.